evening. Hello to everybody watching the Farming Podcast brought to you by Private Property. My name is Mbali Nwoko, as always, your host every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here on the Private Property channel. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, Thank you for constantly supporting the Farming Podcast. And today I've got a fantastic guest who's going to tell us about his agricultural marketplace called Farm Direct South Africa. Um, if you're a farmer and you're looking to get your farm listed onto this platform, get your products out to as many people as possible, I believe this is one such platform that could really propel your business and put it in the forefront of many consumers out there. And so if you have any questions for our guests this evening, please feel free to comment. We're happy to answer your questions live onto the show and continue <coughs> Like, share, and comment as you please. And let us know your thoughts on the Farming Podcast and on our discussion this evening. So tonight I'm joined by Yaku uh, Badenost, who is the founder of Farm Direct SA, and he's going to tell us about his business and what exactly the platform does. Yaku, thank you so much for joining us this evening. How are you doing? I'm well and you, Mubali. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being on your show. It's a real privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Yaku, you know, I follow uh, Farm Direct SA on Instagram and I've just been curious about what the platform is about. But before we dive deeper into it, just tell us who you are and how you came about starting Farm Direct SA. <laughs> Bali, I'm a, um, I'm a boy from the Southern Cape. Um, I grew up on our family farm, Jubilee Kral, down um, 25 k's from Swellendam. Um, and I've always had a very big love for solving problems, but also for agriculture and tourism and things like that. So um, I'm very involved in, in tourism and other projects. So I own a resort on our family farm called Kambati River Resort. Um, and then we also do Una Group, which is a group of tourism properties and restaurants and stuff in the area. And then, yeah, and then this whole project came about as a dream last year. Um, when the whole COVID pandemic struck and we didn't have any guests at the resort. And, mm -hmm. and I said, I must do something with my time. I can't just sit and wait for this thing to turn around. Yeah. So, yes, I started making a huge vegetable garden on the farm and I actually loved it. It's, it's my brother handles all our farming enterprises and the, and the farming side of the business. Um, so I started my own vegetable garden and I thought, well, if this thing turns around, I can at least – uh, get the guests to go in, in into the vegetable garden with their kids and pick some vegetables and teach them where their food really comes from because most of our guests is from Cape Town and from the cities. So they don't really know exactly how their food is grown and where it's produced and, mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So, so yeah, so it started as a dream last year and, um, and, it's, and it's going actually very well. Um, I'm married to Dean, and we've got two uh, kids, a daughter, Linka, which is six, and a boy, Yanru, who's four years old, and um, all involved in the business. Yeah. So tourism, vegetable garden, COVID, and what birth from direct SA? <laughs> yeah, and then I started seeing there's a huge gap. If you Not a gap, but I think there wasn't really a platform for for farmers to connect directly with consumers. There's a lot of groups and there's a lot of marketplaces on, 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 on platforms that I can't mention now, but there's nothing specific that's, that's really um, aimed at the farmer and, and there for the right reasons. So, so then I started this whole idea. The idea I, I came in contact with someone at uh, Lampe Wierkblatt who saw the idea on my Facebook page. And he put me in touch with my, um, with my partner today, Mr. Elmer Drews, who is involved at Agrista, which is a tech company based in Germany. He's, he stays in Cape Town, but his company is based in Germany. And, um, and they, they specialize in things like this. And, and he loved the idea. Um, we, we, came, we came about the idea last year, March, and I saw him, I think it was in the beginning of April. And when I pitched the idea to him, it was like we've both had the same dream. So, so he was the perfect, they were the perfect company to partner up with, Agrista. They are very, very well known in that space. And, um, and then we started building this whole thing. Um, as, you, as you might know, all these tech projects is, is all dreams 
but it takes a lot of capital and a lot of effort to get it off the ground. Um, so it took a bit of time to get the platform up and running. Um, we started building, like I said, last year, April. And, um, and then I started placing out the dream. I, I would love to see it. I think there's nowhere else that I also saw that, um, that you get a platform of a database of farmers in South Africa. There might be one or other that I've missed. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but I haven't seen anything similar as a database of, of farmers in South Africa. So what makes our platform a bit unique is that if a farmer goes on, um, he has to go onto the map of South Africa. It's all in our system. And then he zooms in till he finds his borders of his farm. So all the farms in South Africa is on our system. Okay. And then he actually claims his farm. So then we can connect the story and the farmer and his social profile, everything to this specific farm or farms, um, which is a very nice tool in our whole setup that we have. Um, so firstly, yeah, it's a database of farmers around South Africa. We empower farmers to tell, firstly, tell their stories, um, share their challenges, everyday challenges on the farm, um, and then we help them to market their produce off, off the platform. So the website is called farmdirect.africa. We started off as farmdirectsa.co.za, but we, we, we made our visions and our horizons a bit broader, and we really would love to take this whole platform into the rest of Africa and mm. to empower more farmers to connect directly with consumers. Um, we feel that the platform is ideal for making food production a bit more sustainable in Africa mm. and um, not being harsh against the middlemans, but to cut a little bit of the middlemans out in terms of the farming produce going directly to consumers and, and uh, putting a little bit more money into the farmer's pocket itself, if I can call it that. So, so yeah, so it's a big dream and, um, and it's actually it's going well at the moment. Right. So if I understand correctly, Yaku, uh, you mentioned that farmers can go on to the, to the platform and list their farm, tell a bit about their story and their products. And, you know, the platform, if I understand correctly, is supposed to be the number one platform or the top of mind platform, rather, for consumers to buy directly from farmers. Is that correct? You're 100% correct. So, so firstly, a farmer will go on, onto our website, farmdirect.africa. He will register himself, put a little bit of his story on, claim his farm, all of that. We contact the farmers then and we, we just um, color in, if I can call it that, their profiles and make it look nice. And, um, and then next step is to load a delivery profile. So we get a lot of farmers that already tells us, okay, he farms in... Grafrenet or in Ladysmith or wherever, and he already delivers to Cape Town once a month or he delivers down to George every two weeks or whatever. So we load a delivery profile for each farmer so that when a consumer in that area that the farmer chose goes onto the system, they will get an option for free delivery by farmer. So that's, that's, a, that's another tech um, issue that we had, not an issue, but a tech challenge that we had to develop in the system to make mm. it work. The main objective of the platform is, is we really want to stay true to our name as Farm Direct and not become another middleman. Mm. So, so we had to really go back every day or five and go back to the drawing board and see if we've become a middleman. And, and the way we, we're doing that at the moment is we've decided we're not putting any commission onto produce sales. We only charge the farmer a small fee to be on the platform per month and he can load as many products as he wants to. He can use it as his own little online shop and we will help him to market his produce directly to the consumer. So, so yeah, so we don't want to be a middleman. We don't want to become too involved in the logistics, although we are looking at rolling out a premium option at the end of the year. We will we'll partner with someone who will assist us in in getting the logistics sorted with farmers and getting them closer to the markets that, that they've got the most sales in. Um, so, yeah, so it's going very well at the moment. Right. And with the consumers, they would go directly into Farm Direct uh, and um, they would procure directly from the farmer. So I suppose that there will be a bouquet of various farms and products. And then if the consumer wants beef, for example, they click on the beef item and then they'll buy directly from that farm. And then 
how does it work? And the back end, does the farmer get an alert that somebody's buying uh, beef from their farm and then they have to deliver? Um, and then you do not enter into any, like you said, you're trying not to be the middleman, right? So does a consumer Good. purchase directly online or they just contact yes. the farmer, then the farmer sends an invoice and, you know, the, the, the So, So what we've done, Bali, is to implement a payment system, um, one of the well-known payment systems on the website. So a consumer will go on and he will be purchased directly from a farmer, but he will put his card details in and do a payment. Um, the payment will go into the farm direct account and then the farmer will receive an email to tell you, like you just said, to tell him that someone has bought a, pro a product from him mm -hmm. um, and he needs to get his product ready. So we, we want the farmers to use the system as their own. So they go onto the system, they log into their profile, they'll see the buyer's name is Mr. XYZ um, mm -hmm. with his address and his cell phone number, and mm -hmm. then, then the magic happens. So then the farmer contacts the consumer directly and tells him thank you for his order, and then he starts getting his product ready for shipment. As soon as it's ready for shipment, he will... Um, he will, he will mark it on our system, so there will be an automated message going out to the consumer to tell them that their products are on their way. And as soon as the consumer takes delivery of the products, we pay the farmer. So, um, yeah, so the farmer invoices us, and we pay the farmer directly. We don't take any commission on the sale, but it's just so that we can use one payment system in the middle on the, on the platform. And, yeah. um, and, and to get the farmers to connect directly with them. What's interesting on our website, on the, on the home page, um, at the bottom you'll see there's an there's a, there's a icon that says list of farmers. So anybody can go on there. It's a nice thing to do. Go on there and you can scroll through the farmers on the system. Um, we've got farmers across South Africa. We've mm -hmm. got, I think tonight I've just looked, I think we've got 192 farmers on the system. Um, one or two of, their pro of the profiles is not active because they don't have um, uh, all their stuff on at the moment, but 192 farmers across South Africa. And I think we're in the region of about 450 products at the moment. So any product that comes from a farm, as long as it's from a farm, can be, can be put on the, on the platform. Yeah. And, that um, was good and then, so it's... Apologies, you can continue, Yako. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, so, well, yeah, so it's a year, a, year, a year since we started trading, and we've just gone over the benchmark of a thousand shopping carts. So, yeah, so it's been a, it's been a very interesting year and, a, and a, very, a very nice year to be involved in, in online marketplaces, especially in the agricultural trade. Yeah, because that was going to be my follow-up question to say, you know, having start, having reached a, a, what almost a year now, you know, how has the platform grown? Uh, how has the platform grown from having farmers listed, products traded? Maybe are there any insights rather to also pick up to say, um, what type of commodities are people shopping for and buying, especially during this time? Um, you know, um, yeah, is it beef? Is it vegetables? You know, what are the consumers mm -hmm. mostly buying at this stage? Bali, what, what happened the past year, we, we started listing and, and we had to really dig deep to get farmers to register and to trust the, the platform in the beginning. And, um, and yeah, and then farmers started listing individual products and we still want them to do that. But what we've seen the past two to three months is that farm boxes are doing very well. So you will get, um, for example, a farmer in, in down in the Karoo called True Karoo and they farm with meat. Um, and what they've done is they put together a braai box. So a box from their True Karoo farm called a braai box. And in this box, you will get uh, different cuts of meat from their farm. Um, that's done very well. We, we've got a Wagyu farmer on there called Zunei Wagyu, which is very popular in South Africa at the moment. And he's also got a Wagyu starter box. So, um, so also very nice. But at the end of the day, what we've seen is that boxes are doing well. So it's a bit of that little bit of a food adventure if you're staying in a, in a metro, in a city area, and you order directly from a farmer, and he delivers this very nicely packaged box to your door with all the goodies from his farm. 
Um, so that's done really well. And the nice thing about a box, it, it, it takes a little bit of the delivery cost away because normally we, we try to get the farmers to pack their boxes in the 500 to 1,000 grand range so that it's not too expensive. It's still affordable. It's definitely cheaper to buy online and directly from farmers. But we also keep it as a, as a, as a free market system. So we, we try to educate the farmers on what they should charge for their produce but we don't limit them. Um, I don't want to tell yeah. a farmer he should charge X, Y, Z for his tomatoes or for his meat. So it's still a free market system. And the ones that's priced correctly will do very nice sales. So for any farmers that are watching uh, this podcast this evening and are thinking, you know, they heard you say um, the farmers enlist their products and their farms onto uh, your website or the platform. And there's a small fee that's, that's charged there specifically for marketing, how does the marketing element work? I mean, I've seen that on Instagram, you know, you've recently reached like 7,000 followers. That is amazing. So how do you pick and choose which farm or farmer's products to market um, or to post? <laughs> it's, not, it's not always easy. You are right. It's not always easy. We try to keep a balance in the farmer. And we yeah. try to keep a balance in the produce that we market. We know which ones does very nice sales because of their products that's nicely packaged, first of all. Um, yeah. And we, we try to not just, just educate, but we try to give them branding tips in terms of how to build their farming brand and to become one of the top sellers on the platform. Um, but it is, it is not, it's not easy to choose the, the farmers. The, the platform is growing daily, so we're getting farmers onto the system daily. And, and something which is very interesting and, and very nice is that not a lot of farmers have got their own brand and branding and logo, and they haven't really thought of, given too much thought about the selling side on, 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 on farm produce. They, yeah. they know how to farm, for sure. They know how to buy and they know how to produce um, yeah. very well. But sometimes they, they take the first best option in terms of selling. And, and that's, that's been the interesting part in building this platform. Our farmers have come back to the platform the, for the third time to change their story on their profile. So they've started thinking about all of this and they started thinking about what, 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 what's their story and, and why do they do what they do and why do they love what they do. Um, and, and that's really what's, what's catching the consumers. The consumers love reading about the farmers and who they are and where they farm and and seeing how they've, how they've really thought about pr the production of their produce um, in the agri landscape, so, which is a very nice thing. Yeah. And as in, in, earlier on, you mentioned that you know, changed to the platform dot, from .co to .za, uh, from .co .za to .africa. Are there any um, Correct. Uh, farmers across or outside South African borders that, that have enlisted their products on the platform? And is there any cross-selling? you know, from country to country? Bali, not yet, um, but we've, okay. had, we've had quite a few farmers from Africa contact us, Tanzania, Ghana, Namibia, wow. um, Zimbabwe, farmers that want to get involved and they want to do similar things. At the moment, we're still, um, we're still trying to get our feet in terms of the rest of Africa, in terms of currencies and all that stuff. Um, but I don't think there's any reason that should stop us from not going into the rest of Africa. And our name is all about that. And I think there's a huge market in Africa for connecting consumers directly to, to farmers, even a bigger market maybe in Africa than in South Africa, which is a more developed country in some senses. Um, so, yes, our dream is to really go into Africa and to roll it out and to see what we can do with it. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of, interest from the rest of Africa in terms of, of, of this platform and the way it's been done. Yeah. This is amazing. Like I'm constantly smiling. Thank you. Like, wow. Thank um, you. you know, yeah, <laughs> it's just such a new, uh, a new platform that is close to 200 farmers enlisted, you know, on the platform. And yeah, yeah I, mean, I think as farmers, we always need various or alternative ways of selling our produce, um, you know, then traditional, uh, markets of selling produce, you know, whether that's retail um, to the fresh produce markets, to processors, you know, and so forth. And so I think this is such a fantastic initiative. Did you think it would grow this fast, this quick? 
<laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> no, definitely not. But we've also realized that the sky is the limit and there's so many farmers in South Africa. And how should anybody know what stock you have on your farm? Yes. Um, I don't think there's any other platform that you list your stock on and public can go on there and see that you've got 100 tons of barley or you've got 200 chickens or you've got two tons of butternuts. So I think that's the, that, was the, that was the one thing that also triggered our minds. But the sky is the limit. And, and we really want to do so. There's a, quite a few nice dreams that we're also working on in, in terms of buying better for farmers. But that's a, that's a little bit down the line um, yeah. to see how we, can, how we can assist farmers to buy in better ways and combining volumes and, and, and doing clever buying tactics. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, that's a little bit down the line. But yeah, we've just launched a little bit of a, um, a campaign where we, we, we say to farmers, guys, how should anybody in Africa know that you've got stock of cattle or whatever, except if you really put it out there. You need to advertise and you need to plan ahead and start, start telling your story so that people buy into your brand and into your story. Yeah, yeah. and as, as I'm listening to you talk, um, how do you then close the gates around any middlemen putting their products on farm direct you know um yeah so how, how, how do you maybe manage that it's 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 not always easy um mm -hmm. but we we try to we try to build a, a relationship with the farmers that we get onto the platform mm -hmm. um because they claim their farms we've got a bit of a insight into the farm and the person around the farm so they're a bit more reluctant to claim a farm if it's not really theirs. And if it's not really theirs, the owner of that farm is going to claim it later on and he's going to say, listen, this is not, this is not his farm or your farm, whatever. But it is a difficult one. Um, if, 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 if at the end of the day, if we could help farmers to sell their produce, then our vision is, is, is successful. So it is a difficult one, definitely. Yeah. And Yako, it does a platform only it, when when farmers enlist their products. Does do the products have to be processed products? For example, I heard you talk about a farmer selling beef, etc. So if I'm a cattle farmer, um, you know, and um, I just want to sell my cattle live, or a chicken farmer, and I just want to sell my broilers live, um, is the platform one such that could accommodate that type of produce or? Would a farmer then have to maybe take their chickens or their beef to an abattoir, come back to the farm, maybe wrap it and package it nicely to sell it into a box, like you mentioned? So can live animals be sold? Um, you okay. know, and, and also, I'm just thinking also like maybe vegetable farmers. You know, you mentioned butternuts. If a farmer can put, I'm selling my butternuts in pallets, um, or does it have to be processed? So basically no. my question is, on the platform, when a farmer puts on their products, d does the product specifically have to be processed or can they sell it live or raw from a, from a horticulture perspective? No, they can definitely sell it live and raw. Okay. Um, there's no reason why they couldn't. At the end of the day, our, our aim is to connect the buyer and the seller to each other. Yes. So what they trade between each other should just be from the farm. But we've, yeah. we've got a farmer down in, in, in Wooster who does um, aquaponics, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, if that's the right word for it. Yes. But, but he sells his live fish that they use in dams and for so, – so, no, definitely. Um, live chickens, uh, cows, cattle, anything that you can think of, as long as it's from a farm. Um, our aim is just to connect the buyer and the seller. So, yeah, at the end of the day – we want to go more into commercial farmers as well and, and get them to list their stock on there and the buyers can trade from them on the platform. I think it's an easy way for any farmer to start their own online store is if they just go onto Farm Direct and it's a very small fee that we charge. It's 199 rand a month per farmer for products and they can list how many, how many products they want to. So it's, it's actually it's almost as cheap as you would have hosted your own website. Um, but at the end of the day, we're throwing all the power of all these farmers together and marketing them as one. So, yeah. So, and I think you said earlier that the platform and the Instagram um, pages have grown a lot. Um, 
we're doing our best to get it grown. But I think at the end of the day, the farmers are the heroes and the farmers are the guys telling their stories. And mm -hmm. the, 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 the followers on our platform is definitely not following because, um, because I'm a good looking guy. It's because <laughs> of the farmers and it's because of what they do every day. And it's because of, of, of their true stories and the, and the authentic photos that they're putting on and, and the products that they're selling directly. So, yeah. so yeah, we've really got to aim to make the farmers famous because they need to be famous. They're going through a lot. Absolutely. Farmers are my heroes. South African farmers also, just you know, the number one heroes. So, Yaku, thank you so much for your time this evening. But before I let you go, I just want to find out, so what's next for Farm Direct SA? Um, you know, any future plans in the next 12 months, five years um, that you are at liberty to share <laughs> without, any, <sp> without <laughs> any surprises? <laughs> we, dream, we dream big, so, so we would love to have about 500 farmers by, by the end of the year. Um, and, then, and then at the end of the next year, 2,000 farmers, if that's, if that's uh, reachable. Um, yeah, so we would really want to grow the farming, the farming numbers and the farmer numbers because the more farmers we get onto the platform, the stronger the platform will become and the more sales each farmer will do. Um, because you get farmer X down in George, but he only delivers down to Port Elizabeth, Kibeha, maybe. So we need to get farmers in each little district around South Africa, and we need to get them to start building their farming brands and to get their products out there and, and to really build their farming brands individually, um, but also together on the platform. So, yeah, so I think the biggest aim is to, to get more sales on the platform, but also at the moment we're building stock and the farmers – is our stock and they they are the guys that we need to advertise and that we need to build around the platform was built for farmers so so yeah, yeah that's the I'm curious. that's is the mid term stock, is there any stock that is not listed that people are in great demand of that is an interesting question what we had is when all the kzn riots and stuff happened about two months ago yeah. We had a lot of people go onto the platform and they wanted to buy directly from farmers in KZN, which was a difficult one. Um, and I, I, wished we, I wished we had more farmers in that area listed at that time because they would have done really, really well um, because of all the food shortages and stuff. Um, to answer your question, at the moment, I think the biggest seller on the platform is definitely meat, um, sheep from the Karoo, quality meat, um, that, that the consumer can, can know that it's, that it's formed properly and in the right ways. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the biggest seller on the platform at the moment is meat. As we go into summer, I think we will get more into vegetables and vegetable boxes. There's very nice vegetable farmers down in Philippi area. Um, and, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll let the consumer and the farmer lead the, lead the platform. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Yaku. This is a phenomenal uh, business that you've started. And yeah, like we're talking offline, let's get the interest on and, and let's see how it goes. You know, I'm a pepper farmer in Johannesburg. And every time people ask me, what do you do? And I say, I'm a farmer. They're like, wow, we never meet farmers in the city. So, yeah. you know, I'm sure it'll be a nice element to throw in there to say, hey, Farm directors say also Definitely. have farms in the city that you could buy yeah. and prepare directly from. But thank you so much for your time and all the best with Farm Direct. Thank you, Mubali. I really appreciate it. It was nice chatting to you. And let's get that papers listed on farmdirect.africa. We would love to have you. And, um, and let's see if we can bring you some sales. Absolutely. That was Jakub Badenost, uh, the CEO and founder of Farm Direct S South Africa, which is an agricultural marketplace for farmers to enlist their produce or products on the platform to sell directly to consumers. And as you heard, they try not to act as a middleman um, every day or five days or so. They keep, you know, vetting their business model to say, are we a middleman? Yes or no, because that's not the intention. The intention is really to market products and services of farmers to sell directly to consumers that they would not ordinarily have access to. And I guess for consumers as well, this is an opportunity for you to get to know your farmer, where they are, what they're farming, and 
support them and buy their produce because it's coming directly from the farm. And I think this helps in terms of traceability and knowing where your food comes from at the end of the day. That is Farm Direct SA. Please go visit their website. Um, and yes, if you're a farmer, enlist your product in there. Follow them on Facebook, on Instagram, and also reach out to Yaku if you need any additional help. But that was it from us tonight. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And I wish you a fantastic um, Heritage Month, Heritage Day tomorrow. Have a fantastic weekend and I will see you next week Tuesday at 8pm. That's it for me. Take care. Bye-bye.